Hey guys and welcome to another video. Today I received this MSI card. It's a 3080 Gaming X Trio. It's one of the worst models out there. <laughs> but I got this particular card very cheap. I paid around 1300 euros inclusive express shipping. So it was like 1250. So it uh, was a pretty neat deal. Um, of course it's used, otherwise you wouldn't get such prices, but I don't really care since I have the invoice for this card, so in terms of warranty it's all good. Um, I will now unpack this card, then I will put it on my test bench and then we will see how this card does in terms of firmness, overclocking and such. And after that I will put it on my rig or on my additional rig that I have then. Yeah, let's keep on going. Alright, there we have the card. I mean, in terms of design, this card looks really awesome. I really like it, but in terms of PCB design and power limit and such, uh, yeah, no, this card is trash, sadly. This is the worst. Also, in cooling reasons, this card is really trash. But as I said, 1300 euros, I don't really bother. We will see what you can do with this card, but for today's topic, let's put it on my test bench. Alright, everything is booted up and looks quite nice. You can see on the top right corner, um, GPU memory temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. This card is 100% stock, so I don't know where we <coughs> end up, but uh, I assume close to 100 degrees Celsius, and now we will start the miner. Then we will see what will happen next. Something's odd since the card is only hashing with around 900 millivolts. Uh, 900 megahertz. This is odd. This is very odd. Um, we can see memory temperature 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, do we need maybe a bit more juice power limit wise? Okay, this is odd. Mm, I mean, she's indeed power saving, but to be honest, 900 megahertz is a bit too less. Let me adjust the curve a bit. Okay, as you can see, as soon as I start the miner, the card clocks itself down to like 900 megahertz, which is way too less. I wonder why this is happening, but even there we are seeing memory temperatures of 96 degrees Celsius, which is not that nice, but but okay, it's okay. But I wonder why this card is doing this. Maybe I have to read a bit uh, over this card. For you, it's like a fast jump. For me, it's investigating probably an hour. So, yeah. Alright, as things turned out, this card has a BIOS issue. I don't know why they did this, but I assume it's the, like, it's the same like on my 3090 Asus Strix. This has also a faulty BIOS on it, or at least let's say it's not faulty. It's a prevention to mine Ethereum. And in order to um, solve this problem, we have to flash the new BIOS of the Gaming X Trio. In order to do that, we need MV Flash and uh, the ROM. This is the ROM. And in order to do this, we make a new um, shortcut. Then we do some editing in the properties. Type in new .rom minus six. Then apply and OK. And then we will just start it. There we will see those two versions replaced with. Then we say, oh no, we don't do this now because we have to deactivate. Ah, and we flashed it on its own. Well, then we just can do it. And then we type yes. And then we make again. And now it starts to flash the BIOS on it. Looks good enough. Then just restart and we should be good to go. Alright, PC booted up, card is still there, so nothing went wrong. I mean, 
today's BIOS flashing is so simple. F a few years ago, like 8, it was really horrible. You had to deal with DOS and so, and sometimes it crashed. And now you can just easily flash it via uh, Windows, and even there you don't can make everything anything wrong as you might so. Uh, usually you deactivate the graphics card in the device manager on your own. I forgot it this time, but as you saw, um, NV Flash did it on its own. So basically, there's no way that you can do something wrong nowadays by flashing BIOSes. I mean, it's on the other side good, but on the other side it's a bit sad because you don't need that knowledge anymore to flash a BIOS. It's, it's just so simple. Yeah, Wayne, let's keep on going. Let's start the miner and then let's see what the miner says now. Nice, we have steady 1350 megahertz. So, so far, so good. This seems to work out. Uh, of course, we want 100% fan. Don't want the card to die. That would be bad. Already ramped up to 90 degrees Celsius on the memory, not not even done a single share yet. This card is bad. This card definitely needs firmware pad replacement. We will do that of course. Um, but for now I will just look and see how high this thing can hash a mine. And then um, I will make such changes in my other videos that I will make about this card. So let's increase the clock, let's say by around 1000. If the card is not doing this, I would be really disappointed. I mean, there are cards that can't hold up this. I just hope this card can. <laughs> right over 100 degrees Celsius now, 102. Holy shit. This is one of the worst coolers ever. 90 mega hashes. Yeah, doesn't look so bad. 216 watts. That's efficient as hell. But I want to see 100 mega hash and not 90. So let's see. Okay, this doesn't look bad at all. 104 mega hash with 1600. I don't know if the card could get higher in terms of hash or memory clock, but we are seeing already 110 degrees Celsius. I don't want to break the card, so yeah, you know me, I know myself, um, see, you in a, see you in a few seconds when I take the card right, apart. This is how the card looks like with the attached backplate. Um, there are also ba uh, thermal pads on the back side of the card. You can see the little warranty seal that we will now remove. There is meanwhile the well-known razor blade and now we just try to get underneath the sticker. Like in my other videos, it doesn't, it's not that hard anyways. Now we will take the cooler further apart. All right, the cooler is now off. As you can see, the firmware paste application is quite nice, or was quite nice. Also the firmware pads were also installed well. So all in all, it's okay, but this card was really, really hard to take apart never in my life really i had to pull that hard from the pcb um yeah but i managed to do it so i will install new pads for those and then we will see how it works or not so on this particular card better safe than sorry uh, i covered the uh, possibly points where the card could get shorted with cut tone tape so I should it should be fine. Now I will spread the thermal paste a bit around and then we will add the copper plate. Alright. Looks good. Alright. Looks good. <laughs> At least for me. And now we will put back the cooler. Alright, as you can see the card is there. Sensor readings are here. And now we will start the miner. And then let's hope for the best. You can see the GPU temperature is quite okay as for now. 
I mean hotspot and the GPU temperature itself, not the memory temperature. But you can see um, memory temperature is also rising up. I don't know if it's faster than before, but yeah, let's see. Hotspot and GPU are looking good. G memory temperature itself is also looking good. And now we pump the core. 1600. Boom. Let's see what happened next. Alright, as you can see, the miner is now running slightly over 3 minutes. We have nearly 104 mega hashes, and the temperature is at 82 degrees Celsius, hovering between 82 and 84. So I will call this a win. We dropped, we shaved off around 28 degrees Celsius, which is not less at all. Um, yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the videos guys, that is the whole process to bring a 3080 Gaming X Trio to mine properly, 100%, also in the Sahara or so, you know, so I would say, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment or like, and if you want to subscribe, I would really appreciate it, and I would say, see you in the next video.